Hello, guys. Uh, welcome back to Maison African Motives, still on Mathematics Grade 10. Uh, in this platform, we shall be focusing on the question paper, which was written in November uh, 2016. That's paper two uh, paper. So we shall uh, quickly rush through the questions so that we can see how we're supposed to attempt uh, these typical questions. So uh, remembering your instruction, guys, make sure that you read the instructions properly. So we had nine questions. And uh, the most important part that I want is this part of uh, rounding off your answers to two decimal places unless stated otherwise. So unless you are given another option, then you can uh, leave your answer to other decimal places. That's uh, the consideration from that. So without wasting much time, let us quickly rise through the first person of the paper. That is question number one. On question number one, we are given that the heights of 20 children were measured in centimeters. So these are the heights of 20 children, which were measured in centimeters and results were recorded. The data collected is given in the table below. So this is the given information or the given data of the, of the measurements of the children. So on 1.1, we are given, write down the median height measured. The median, remember median, that is a, actually half of the distribution. So what you need uh, actually to check is uh, the numbers, the layout of the numbers, how many numbers are there, and also are they in order of size? So you can check it's 127, 128, 129, 131, 130, 130, 131. So they are in order of size until the last one, which is 145. All right, so these are the numbers that we have. So we know that median is actually half of the distribution, which means we are, to, we are supposed to check the numbers. There are 20 of them. So it is going to be half of the distribution that is between the mid between the middle values, which is 136 and 137. All right, uh, let's say we didn't see that. What we're going to do, we know that uh, median is half of the distribution. So it is going to be equal to half of n plus one. So that's median here is equivalent to n plus one over two, whereby we've got a, a total of 20 children here. So it's going to be 20 plus one over two, which is uh, 11. So that's a position actually, sorry. So this is the position that you're going to have 20 plus one, whatever that we have, we divide by two, that is uh, 10 comma five. So we shall have our median on the way we have 10 comma five, well, according to the numbers that we have. So that is, we are going to count our values. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And uh, the, it, comma five means it's actually going into that seven. Here we had a 10, then 10 comma five is in this region. So it's found in between the 136 and the 137. So our median is going to be equivalent to uh, 136 plus 137, everything over two. So that's gonna be your median value now, uh, which is 136 plus 137 divided by two. Uh, that will be something like 136,5. So that is the answer now, 136,5. Uh, that's the uh, median height, which is measured in centimeters. All right. So it's actually, uh, you can even take the numbers uh, 1, 1. You can start with this one. This is 127, 145, 128. Canceling until you have the numbers which are remaining. If you can do that, guys, you can actually have your answer. All right, so we are keeping cancelling, cancelling, and cancelling. So as you can see, we are left with two numbers, 136 and 137, at the center. That is the median value. We add those two numbers, then divide by two. All right, so I don't think we might need this. Uh, okay, or we might need it later on. Let me just try to do this, guys. Sorry for that. All right, so we got our median here. Remember, it was 136,5 uh, centimeters. All right, the 1.2 determine the mean height of the given distribution, the mean. So mean, you're supposed to add everything. That's the sum of terms over the number of terms. So that's 1.21, 1. so that is the mean, 1.21. Uh, 1. So our mean is equivalent to the sum of terms 
over the number of terms. So you're supposed to count all the terms that we are given, sum, add, everything. All right, so uh, what I want you to do is to add everything here from 127 up to 145, add everything. So if you add these numbers, you are going to obtain a total of 2728, then divide by the number of terms. How many students, how many children are there? There are 20 children, so you divide by 20. So that is going to be the mean height. All right, so it's 2728 divided by 20, which is um, 136,4. So you're going to have 136,4 centimeters. That's the, midi, the mean. All right, then the range of the given information. Remember, range is equivalent to the maximum minus the minimum value. So we are just having maximum here, 145. Our minimum, which is 127. So you're going to just subtract 145 minus 127 that gives you um the range all right 145 minus 127 that is 18 so we are having a range of 18 centimeters okay uh the interquartile range the interquartile range so i'm just going to work this aside and see what you're going to have the interquartile range which is 1.23 all right so that's 1.23 so uh, remember, for you to determine the interquartile range, that is actually the difference between the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. All right. So we are referring to the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. Uh, knowing that for us to have the lower quartile, we are going to use this formula. The lower quartile is actually a quarter of the distribution or n plus 1 over 4. That is... Uh, uh, our lower quartile. So in this case, our N here representing the total number of children, which is 20. So we shall have a 20 plus one. So this is a position that you're going to have, all right. So 20 plus one over four, which is something like five commas. Okay, 20 divide, 21 divided by four, we've already added there. So it's gonna be 5.25. So where do we have the 5,2 value, 5,25 value? It's a position that you are working with. So I want you to take note about this one where we are going to have it. I'm going to count it, the numbers. So here we have got um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But we need 5,25. Yeah, we need 5,25. So 5,25 is going to be in between here, this number and this number, because five is at this value. So comma two five, it's in between these two, 131 and 133. That is where we have our lower quartile. So we're going to add those two numbers, 131 and 132. So our lower quartile is going to be 131 plus 133 divided by two, which is uh, something like uh, 131, Plus 133, so this is 133, divide by 2. So we are going to have 132. So this is 132. So that is our lower quartile. Then the upper quartile, just like uh, the lower quartile, this one is going to be n plus 1 over 4. n plus 1, we have got 3 into n plus 1 like that. This is 3 quarters of the distribution. So it's 3 into n plus 1, which is 21 divide by four. So that's a position that you're going to have. So in this case, you are simplifying a position representing uh, the upper quartile, which is in this case, 15.75. Uh, so we need a value between uh, where, we, where we exactly have the 15.75 position from the numbers that we are given. So remember that these are 20 values. So if we count up to this value, it will be at 10. So this is a continuation 11, We've got 12, we've got 13, we've got 14, we've got 15 here. But take note the value that we need in this case is 15 comma. So it's found between the where we've got our 15 and the next value. So in between these two values, that's where we have 15 comma 25. So we're going to add these two values, 141 and 142 divided by two. So this will be uh, 141. So our lower quartile in actual sense is going to be 141 plus 142 
uh, divide by two. So that's what you're going to have in this case. So this is uh, actually something that you can even uh, check direct from your uh, from your table, but you can use these formulas if you do not want to go wrong. So this is 141,25. All right, so the upper quartile is between, is, uh, is on 141,5. The lower quartile is at 132. So that means the interquartile range, which we said is the maximum, which is the upper quartile, minus the minimum quartile, which is the lower quartile. So you're going to subtract upper quartile of 141, comma five minus the lower quartile of 132. So this gives us the interquartile range. All right, sorry for that, sorry for that, sorry for that. So this is like this. Uh, we do not need a fraction. I need to just put it this way. So it's 141 comma five uh, minus 132. All right, that's 19 over two or nine comma five. Okay, so we're gonna have nine comma five centimeters. All right, so. That was, was it, yeah. I think everything is clear there. All right, then on 1.3, draw a box and whisker diagram to represent the data. All right, we need a box and whisker plot. Uh, in this case, uh, if we had to check uh, most of the values, we got them, uh, which are needed on the box and whisker plot. Remember, uh, we need the five number summary here. So that's 1.3. So on 1.3, we can even do it here. So there are some values that we already have on our five number summary. So we know that uh, on our five number summary, we are going to need uh, the minimum value. Okay, so you're gonna need the minimum value in this case of which is already there on our table here. The minimum, that's 127, the least value that we can, uh, we have, that is 127. We need, uh, Q1, which is the lower quartile. We need the median, which is Q2. We need Q3, which is upper quartile. And we need the maximum value. So these are the ones that we actually need. So in this case, it's like everything is there. Because Q1, we calculated Q1 when we were finding uh, the lower quartile here. This is our lower quartile, which is Q1. All right, then Q3, we calculated it also. Uh, and also QT, that should Q2, that was our median here. We calculated Q2. All right, so we have this value. So Q1, that's 132. 132. Q2, which is our median, our median value, it's 136,5, which is 136,5. All right, our Q3, which is the upper quartile, uh, the upper quartile in this case here, which is 141,5. So we've got 141,5. The maximum value is found on the table here. Remember, we said our maximum value is at 145 when we calculated range that time. So this was 145. Okay, so this information is enough for you to draw a box and risk a plot. All right, so that was our 1.3. All right, so let's just see what we need here. I'm just going to insert a ruler just a little bit to use, draw the straight line, but uh, everything we can just do it the normal way. All right, so we shall just have a certain scale of our choice. Uh, just depending with the values that we have, 127, 132, we just have to approximate where these values are. So you can just choose a certain scale. Uh, I think a suitable scale, we can even choose five units in between. So you can just say this is 120, this is 125, this is 130 plus five, that's 135 plus five, that's 130, plus five, that's 135, plus five, that's 140, plus five, that's 145. We've got the maximum value is now there, plus five, that's 150. All right, so you just choose, even you can start at 125, just choose values which can accommodate these numbers. We need 127. So remember the box is consisted with these, that the one, then the whiskers is from the minimum and the maximum. So the minimum is at 127, which is an approximation. We can just approximate in between 125 and 130. That's where our 127 is, we just approximate. Then uh, the maximum value is at 145, which is somewhere here. So that's what we have at 145. All right, then from there, we need the Q1, which is the lower quartile at 132, just approximate. Uh, 132, maybe somewhere here. So this is now part of the box. Okay, so let's just say 
that's where here this is where we have 127 uh, this is where we have 132 all right then uh q2 is at 136,5 which is 136,5 above above 136 maybe somewhere here just above we just approximate guys because you are not given a scale uh, there so that's 136,5 then uh, q3 at 141,5 so we've got a q3 maybe somewhere here so remember this is one part of the box so this is at 141,5 141,5 all right so just join in for the box here, we're going to draw from Q1 to Q3, all right? From Q1 to Q3, it gives us a box. Then um, this is our Q2. So this we're gonna have Q1, uh, Q2, Q3. All right, then we can join the whiskers to the box like this. All right, so that's what we have in this case. Uh, clearly presenting the values which uh, which need to be shown on the box and whisker plot. Uh, so be careful with these typical questions, but I think everything here was uh, actually fine. So the last question number one, uh, 1.3 having uh, actually two marks and that's a total of, of nine marks from question number one. Okay, question number two, you are given the intelligence uh, quotient score all right, IQ of grade 10 class is summarized in the table below. Write down the model, uh, class the model. Okay, so the mod is the one with the highest frequency. Just check your frequency here. The one with the highest frequency is we've got the highest frequency of eight, which corresponds with this class. So the model class is 100 less or equal to X less than 110. So you take the class as it is. Okay, 2.2, determine the interval in which the median lies. So remember median, that's half of the distribution. So where is this median going to lie in this information? So we just need um, this, all right. We just need these guys, all right. Let's do this, let's do this, all right. So this will be our median on uh, 2.2. Okay, so where is it gonna lie? We just have to add the total because we're not given the total there. So let's just find the total five plus eight, uh, plus seven, plus five, plus four, plus two. All right, so we've got a total of 30 in this case. That's the total that we are given, a total of uh, 130. So what we need is to find where exactly does your median lie, which is uh, on 30 divided by two. That's the 15th yet value the, or any, according to the frequency. So we're going to calculate our frequencies up to where we get a 15. All right, so let's start from here. Four plus eight, that is a 12. So we are less than 15. Okay, then eight plus a seven. All right, let's add and see. Eight plus a seven, that is 15. So 15 is actually found here in this seven. That is where we have our 15. So the answer is going to be the class which corresponds with where we got our 15. So we got our 15 in the class of 110 less or equal to X less than uh, 120. So that's how you take the median is half of the distribution. If you're dealing with uh, grouped information like that, you take the value as it is ungrouped information, then you're going to use it as N plus one over two. All right, so that was the answer for the median. On 2.3, estimate the mean IQ score of the scores of the learners. All right, so we need uh, of this class of learners. So what is the mean value? This is a grouped information where we are referring to a class from 90 up to 100, from 100 up to 110. So what do we do to find uh, this mean? All right, so our mean in this case, we are going to work with the class centers or the class midpoints. All right, so that's what you're going to do in this case. So your mean, you are going to find the class midpoints of each class, then you multiply to the corresponding frequency. So what I might simply say here is that this class here is go, has got uh, a minimum of 90, a maximum of 100. So you need to find the midpoint or the class center. How do I find this class midpoint? 
I just have to add these two, the, the minimum uh, plus the maximum, then whatever that I got here divided by two. So what you simply do, you add 90 plus 100 divided by two. So that's 90 plus 100 divided by two. So that's what you simply do for each and every class. So 90, uh, let's just use our calculator, our division at once here. So we've got 90 plus 100, whatever that you get here, you divide by two, which is 95. So we are having our value at 95. That is the class center, so we've got 95 here. So the 95 that you get, you multiply to the frequency of four. So it's class midpoint times frequency. That is 95 times four. All right, you move on to the second class, you do the same up to the last one. All right, so you're going to add 100 plus 110 divided by, by two, something like that until guys, the last one. So you're going to find here, 105, all right, here we're going to obtain 115, 120 plus one, 125, 135, 145. So you add the two, divide by two, add the two, divide by two, those are, are your class midpoints. Whatever that you get, you multiply to the frequency. So now we've got 105 times eight. So it is going to be 105 times eight. So let's just uh, show this 105 times eight, Class, you move on to the other one from 105, that's 115. So we've got uh, 115 times the corresponding frequency, which is seven. 115 times seven plus the corresponding 125 times five plus the corresponding one, which is 135 times four. 135 times four plus the corresponding one, 145 times two. All right, so you have taken all the class midpoints with their uh, frequencies. Then we divide by the total frequency. Remember our total frequency there was a 30. So we're going to divide by that. All right, so that's what you're going to have uh, from this one. Our mean is going to be equivalent what? So you can just add, uh, multiply everything on top there the way it is. All right, let's just put in our calculator. Uh, 95 times four. Uh, plus 105 times eight, plus this one is uh, 115 times seven, all right, plus uh, 125 times a five, plus uh, 135 times a four, all right, we've got every information inserted here. Oh, 145 and two, so we've got 145 and two there plus 145 times two. All right, so this is what we're going to have. 3,480, so we're going to have 3,480 over 30. Then we can divide from our calculator by 30 here, divide by 30. Our answer is going to be 116. All right, so that was uh, uh, the mean IQ from the information that we had, that was uh, the mean IQ. Uh, from the given grade 10 uh, students or grade 10 learners. So that was question two, having a total of six marks. Let's check the other part of the question, which is question number three. Show that triangle A, B, C um, with vertices that A, B, C is isness. So let's triangle. Okay, so there's a triangle that we are given and we are supposed to show that this triangle is a, an isosceles triangle. So that's 3.1. So uh, what we just need here, uh, let's just say this is our triangle. We do not know what it looks like, but we have got the point A, the point B, the point C. So that's what we have. Uh, the point A, that's one, one. That's our point A here, one, one. The point B, that's three, six. And the point C is six, three. All right, what can we do to show that this triangle is an isosceles triangle? Uh, remember the properties of an isosceles triangle that two sides, they're actually equal. Opposite sides, uh, if we are uh, not opposite, but two sides which are opposite to the equal angles, but we can't work with angles. We just know, need to know that these two sides can be equal or it can be a condition that these two sides are equal or it can be a condition that these two sides, they are equal. So you do not know which one. So what are you supposed to do? Definitely, it's a matter of testing. It's a matter of testing here. You are supposed to test each and every line. So let's test our lines. 
Let's start with the line A to see here length AC. Let's see our length AC. Remember the distance, guys, uh, is given by the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So we are referring to the point A and the point C. So this can be our x1 here. All right, let me just change my marker here. All right. So I'm referring to this as my x1, y1, here as my x2, y2. So from the formula that we have, the distance AC is going to be the square root of x2, that is 3 minus x1, x2, that's 6, 6 minus 1. So that's 6 minus 1 squared plus uh, y2 minus y1, that's 3 minus 1. So you're going to have 3 minus 1 squared. All right, so that's the length of AC. So you're going to test the length because this, to be an isosceles, two sides has to be equal. If you just have that condition, if all sides are equal, then it's an isosceles. Then it's an equilateral triangle, sorry. If all the sides are equal, it becomes an equilateral. All right, so I've got square root of 29 in this case. So this is square root of 29, or as a decimal, it can be 5,39, 5,385, which is 5,39. So it's 5,39, okay, units. Then uh, we are done with AC. Let's check the other one, which is from A to B. So let's check line AB, all right? Um, from A to B, we are going to use the same formula, the square root of X2 and this and that. So this can be our X2, X2, Y2. So we're going to have this as the square root of X2 minus X1. So this is actually 3 minus 1. So you've got 3 minus 1 squared plus uh, Y2 minus Y1, which is 6 minus 1 squared. All right, so let's check what you're going to have for length AB. Uh, sorry for that. Why am I keeping going back to this PDF? I actually need this one. All right, I need this calculator here. So you're gonna have the square root of uh, three minus one squared. So this is three minus one squared plus uh, six minus one squared, that's six minus one squared. All right, so this will be the square root of 29. So as we can see, these two sides, they're equal. Okay, let's just cross check to BC. Uh, BC is not supposed to be equal to this. If BC is equal to this, then it's not an associate, it's an equilateral triangle. So let's check BC. Uh, BC going to do the same, the square root of x2 minus x1, so now 3 minus 6 squared. So we've got 3 minus 6 squared plus 6 minus 3 squared. So this is 6 minus 3 squared. All right, which is going to be BC. Uh, that's B to C. All right, so we've got uh, the square root of uh, 3 minus 6 squared. Okay, not 3 plus 6, but 3 minus 6 squared plus another one, which is six minus three squared. All right, so let's check what we have. Three square root of two, which is actually different from the square root of 29. So as you can see, these two sides are equal. Uh, length A, C, from A to C, and from A to B, these two are equal. So that means it's an associate triangle. A, C is equal to A, B. So therefore, triangle A, B, C is an isosceles triangle. All right, so that's it, guys. Uh, that's it. How to prove an isosceles triangle? If it is a scalene, then all sides are not equal. If it is an equilateral triangle, all sides are equal. That is what you're supposed to do to prove uh, this one. All right, so on 3.2 in the diagram below, A, B, C, A, D, C, B is a kite. All right, so remember a kite, the properties of a kite that uh, the opposite sides, uh, these sides which are, uh, Adjacent sides, yeah. Adjacent sides, they're actually equal. AD will be equal to DC, and also A to B will be equal from B to C. So these are the properties that you're supposed to know. Already have given you here, AD is equal to DC, and B is equal to BC. D is a point such that AD, AD is parallel to the x-axis. All right, so AB here, AD here is parallel to the x-axis, all right, so, um, okay, that's fine. So that means this one is actually a horizontal line because the x-axis is a horizontal line. So this is a horizontal line uh, passing at y is equal to five if we are to continue here, which means it's going to continue at y is equal to five. The y value here is five, so it's the one that you take. Okay, anyways, this is not part of the question now. CD 
is perpendicular to the x-axis. CD is perpendicular, which means it is at 90 degrees with the x-axis. All right, that's CD. So it means the value of x here is the same value of x that you're going to have direct at point D, but we do not know that. The diagonals, they intersect at P. All right, so P here, yeah, that's the point of intersection of the diagonals and this and that. All right, so that's what we had. Uh, from the information that we are given, show that the coordinates of point C are 80. Okay, the point C is 80. Show that. Okay, what can we do that the coordinate of point C is 80? All right, that's the question. That's the question. Show that. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. There are so many ways that we can use, but um, let's start by this concept here. C is actually in the x axis. This is where we have our point C here, all right, which lies in the x axis, all right. Then what do we have from uh, the other points? We are given the distance here, guys. Uh, AD is five units, all right. AD is five units from A to D here. We've got five units, all right. That's what we have. But if we are to cross check what we have, uh, from this point, because we are given this is a, a straight line AD, which is uh parallel to the x axis, and we are given that we've got five units, okay. From point here, from this point three going down, spread to the x, x spread to the x axis here. The value of x at this point is three, which means also at this point we've got three. So that means from the origin to this point, we have got three units. From the origin to this point, there are three units from point zero. Then from the point three here up to C. We have got five units. So what we simply do, three plus five, that is eight. So therefore, the point C here is going to be eight is zero. All right. So I think with the explanations, guys, that I had, you understand how we end up having the point C. So there was for you to show that C is equivalent to that. Okay, 3.22, write down the coordinates of P. All right, so let's see. Where do we have our P? P was the point of intersection. Okay, this is where we have P as the point of intersection. Okay, uh, these are uh, actually, I want you to see what is happening here. There are some things that you need to understand, guys. Okay, if we are to cross check, let's just give these as points. I'm just going to name points of our choice here. Let's just say, since we've got A, We've got D, we've got C, but at three here, we do not have point. Let's just say this point is called F. All right. If we are to cross check this shape that we have, which is F, from this point to this point, we said we've got five units. From this point to this point, we said we've got five units. And also, if we are to check the last time we said the Y axis here is equal to five, which means here we are at five. So it means from C to D, we've got five units. From F to A, we've got five units. So at the end, we can truly uh, say that, okay? We can truly say that uh, A, D, C, F, take note F is our added point. It's what, it was not part of the diagram, is a square. So that is actually a square because all the sides are equal. It's a quadrilateral and all the sides of that quadrilateral are equal. So if truly uh, a, is, a, D, C, F is a square, so what does it mean? The point P here is the point of intersection of the diagonal. So, and we know that on a square, these diagonals, they bisect each other and they do not just bisect, they bisect each other at 90 degrees. So the diagonals, they bisect each other. So you can take advantage of the point A and the point C to say that P is the midpoint, P is the midpoint, okay, of a uh, line, which is diagonal AC and also diagonal FD, all right. But in this case, we take advantage of uh, diagonal AC because it's the one that has got everything. D, A, F, D, there's nothing. We just have this point three uh, here. At D, we do not know these coordinates. Okay, even we can use that. We know those coordinates. Oh, 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 okay. So, guys, I'm actually confusing you. The point D, we can know these coordinates because remember, it's at it's a vertical a vertical line here, which is perpendicular to the x-axis, where x is equal to eight. So we know that x is equal to eight. 
and y in this point, y is five. So this point is eight, five. At point F, we've got the coordinates is three, zero. So you can use any point, either point D uh, and F, or A and B, or A and what? A and uh, uh, C. So I'm going to use point A, C. So that means P is going to be equal to, uh, if I'm using these points, remember the midpoint concept, guys, you add the values of X together, you divide by two. You add the values of Y together, you divide by two. So that's X1 plus X2 over two. Uh, y1 plus y2 over 2. So that's going to be the point P. So using the line AC, let's start with line AC. We've got X here, which is 3. X here, which is 8. So it's 3 plus 8 over 2. You move on to the Y values. Here we've got 5. Here we've got a 0. So it's 5 plus 0 over 2. So that's the point P, um, which is 8 plus 3, that's 11, isn't it, guys? 8 plus 3, or oh, I can just use your calculator. 8 plus 3, that's 11 over 2. Uh, 5 plus 0 here, that's 5 over 2. So that's our point P. So like I said, we can uh, use, sorry, we can use um, the point, uh, the line FD, which is our, which is the other line that we had before. So let's see if we can to, if we are to use FD. Okay, we can even try and concentrate here. So let's just let's just try FD. So using FD here, remember FD is an added point. We did we did not have F before. I'm just I just added that point. So uh the P that we have, we are going to add the point at uh, F at F X is three. Uh at Y there at point D X is eight. So it's three plus eight over uh three plus eight over two then we move on to the y value the y value at f it's zero the y value at d it's five so that's zero plus five over two so as you can see we are having the same answer for the point p so it was actually out of your choice which one to use but that's our point p which is 11 over two five over two all right so we now have the point p uh, 11 over 2, 5 over 2. We might need this point later on. We do not know. Uh, let's check the other part of the question. 3.23, uh, calculate the gradient of BD. All right, BD, the gradient of the line BD. Do we have the point B? We have got the point B here. Uh, the point D, remember D, we already call, we said it's 8, 5. So there are two points that we have, or you can even use the point F, this one, or you can use the D as 8.5. So that means gradient can be found. So uh, that was question 3.24. I'm just going to do this. 3.24. So we need the gradient of the line BD. Knowing that the point B is negative 1, negative 4. That's our point B here. And the point D, we calculated that point D. It gave us 8.5. So that was 8.5. All right, so given two points, we know that we can calculate the gradient because gradient is the change in y over the change in x. So that means uh, the gradient of line BD, uh, BD is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which is y2, yeah, that's five, minus y1, which is a negative four. So it's actually minus minus, which is a plus. All right, everything over x2, which is 8, minus x1, which is negative 1. So as you can see, also negative, negative, that's a positive. So this can actually give us the gradient of the line. Uh, that is going to be 5 plus 4 over, so because we have added there. So it's going to be 5 plus 4 over 8 plus 1, or 8 minus, minus, still one and the same thing there. So you can even choose to use the minus and the minus. Uh, still, we are going to obtain the same answer, guys. All right. So this is going to be a one. So you're obtaining a gradient of one. So the gradient of line BD is equal to one. All right. Let's check what we have on 3.25. All right. This was 3.23. Oh, this is 3.24 now. All right. 3.24, calculate the length of line AC, okay, the length of line A to C. Do we have A and C here? All right, this is our A and that's our C. So we can take the coordinates, A is three, five, 
and C it's eight zero. So knowing that our point A is three five and our point C it's eight zero, we can calculate the length from this. Remember uh, the, the, the length, the formula for length, we used it uh, previously on the previous question, but since this is another person, I'm just going to rewrite that length, but remember the formula that we had, guys. We said the length of a line AC is going to be equivalent to the square root of X2 minus X1 squared plus Y2 minus Y1 squared. So you can insert the values here. That's uh, X2. When I have X1, Y1, X2, Y2. So eight minus three, so eight minus three squared plus y, that's zero minus five squared. So you put zero minus five squared. Or either way, whatever option, guys, you can use this in another way, the values, but you're going to obtain the same answer. Maybe you started with point C, uh, then you're going to obtain uh, different layout in terms of the points, but the answers, they are going to be the same. All right, so that is uh, plus zero minus five squared, we put uh, zero minus five squared, which is going to be five square root of two. All right, so that's five square root of two from your calculator. Uh, but let's say you just simplified everything under the square root without this square root. Am I gonna remove this square root? Is it gonna be possible? Because this one is giving us a simplified answer. Let's say, okay, let's say you didn't work with the square root, you worked with like we are going to obtain 50. So someone could have written this as the square root of 50 or five square root of two units. So that's the length of the line AC. All right, then uh, on 3.25, calculate the area of the kite A, D, C, B. All right, we need the area of the kite. Uh, what do we have actually for the area of the kite? There are so many formulas that you can use. Uh, let us take back to our kite here. This is our kite, guys. Uh, from the area of a kite, we know that it's the half product of the diagonals, half the product of the given diagonals. Or what you can do is to calculate the area of this triangle, P, B, C, plus the area of this triangle, plus the area of this triangle, plus the area of that triangle, guys. It's going to be a lot. So for you to avoid that, you simply find half the product of the diagonals. That's the area of a trapezium. Uh, that's the area of a kite. I mean, uh, if you're given a kite, which is the same thing as a rhombus. Okay, if you're given a rhombus, you simply multiply the product of the diagonals divided by two. All right, so that's 3.25. So our area in this case is going to be half the product of diagonals. Half product of diagonals, diagonals. All right, so that's the product of the diagonals. So let's check the diagonals that we have in this case, uh, which diagonals are given from the kite that we have. So we have got uh, the diagonal here from A to C and B to D. So it's half of AC times BD. All right, so we said we've got AC here and BD, so it's half of AC times BD. All right, uh, AC, we just calculated AC right now. We got our AC here, don't forget guys. We calculated AC, we got uh, five square root of two or five square root of 50 there. So that means we are going to have half of, so our area is going to be half times five square root of two times BD, okay, if we calculated BD before the length of BD, I don't think so, I don't think so. Okay, I don't see any part where we calculated that. All right, so which means we do not have uh, BD. So yeah, we do not have, we just calculate the gradient here. We just calculate the gradient. So that means we are supposed to calculate the length of BD. All right, so already we put our points here. Uh, B and D, remember we listed those points before when we wanted to calculate the gradient. We've got B and D, so now we must calculate the length of BD. Guys, the formula, we have already written the formula X2 minus this and that, so we just have to insert our values. All right, so on BD, our X2 minus X1, that's eight minus minus one, which is eight plus one, eight minus minus one squared, okay, plus, 
uh, y2 minus y1, that's five, minus minus four, so it's five minus minus four squared. All right, so that's what you're going to have in this case, of which you can just use your calculator. Minus and minus, that's a plus. So here it's like eight plus one, five plus one. All right, so we're gonna have uh, the square root of uh, eight plus one, which is nine. Okay, so that's eight plus one squared, uh, plus another one, which is five plus four squared, five plus four squared, which is nine square root of two. So this is going to give us nine square root of two, or it can be like this. If you didn't use this, it was going to be nine squared times two, which is 162. It was going to be square root of 162. So this can be all square root of 162 or square root of 162. So you are going to use square root of 50 times square root of 162, which is the same way as using uh, five square root of two. And this one is nine square root of two. So you multiply by nine square root of two. That's the area of the kite guys, half product of the diagonals, you're done. So it's going to be half the product. Let's see from our calculator, that's half multiply by five square root of two, that's five square root of two, you move both side times nine square root of two. So let's see what you're going to have. That's 45 square units. So this is area which is measured in square units or units squared. Some they say units squared, some they say square units. So this was actually the, the area. Remember, we are not given centimeters or anything. We are given as AD five units. So your area is going to be in square units. So that was actually question three, guys, having a total of 15 marks. As you can see, guys, if you could have attempted this way, then we are going to have 15 marks on question number two. So it actually needs you to, guys, to revise as much questions as possible. Please do revise as much as you can. Uh, that's the only way out. All right, uh, let's check. Uh, on question number four, we are now given uh, two a right angle triangle, yes, sides A, B, C, and angle theta shown. Okay, so this is a right angle triangle, this angle theta here. On 4.11, write down the following in terms of A, B, and C, cos theta, this and that. Okay, this is a right angle triangle, guys, you're back to your trigonometry, where you are supposed to know your trigonometrical ratios from Soka Toa. So we have got uh, Soka. So here, of which some they can use other identities, not soccer tower. There are so many ways, like uh, uh, this one, Chasho Tao. So there are so many ways that you can use as long you know how to take the values from what you're given in that case. Okay, so for cos theta, we know that cos is that adjacent over hypotenuse to there. So that's 4.11a. So cos theta is equivalent to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. According to theta here, uh, this is our adjacent B, it's our adjacent, the one that is uh, sitting next to each other with the right angle here. So that's our adjacent. And the hypotenuse does not change, always opposite to 90 degrees. So that's your hypotenuse there. So that means cos theta is equivalent to adjacent, which is B over the hypotenuse, which is C. So it's going to be B over C. Then we move on to the B part where we've got tan theta. So tan from Toa here, tan Toa, opposite over the adjacent. So that's opposite over the adjacent, which is the opposite according to theta is A. So that's our opposite A over the adjacent. We said our adjacent is B. All right, then we move on to C, which is sine 90 degrees minus theta. So remember guys from your identities that sine 90 minus theta is equivalent to cos theta. So that's cos theta. Okay, so if it is equivalent to cos theta and we said cos theta here is B over C. So it is going to be equal to B over C. That's it. So that's the value of sine 90 minus theta there. On now, uh, 4.12, we are now given that if it is given that A is equal to five theta 50 degrees, calculate the numerical value of B. All right, so there we are now given a condition that if A is equal to five, so let's just uh, see what we have here. If our A is equal to five, 
and our theta here is 50 degrees. Okay, then the question is to calculate the numerical value of B, which is the adjacent the B here. So you need a ratio which has got A and B, which is the adjacent, uh, the opposite here on A and the adjacent. And that formula is on turn toward the opposite of adjacent. We've got A over B here. All right, so we're going to take that ratio, that's 4.12. Okay, let's take the ratio into consideration. 4.12, we uh, say that tan theta is equivalent to opposite over adjacent, which is A over B. And we have the value of theta. Theta is 50 degrees, so it is going to be tan of 50 degrees, which is equal to A. We have the value of A. We are given that our A is 5. So it is going to be 5 over B. So the question is for you to calculate the value of B from this ratio. Guys, this is same as over 1. So you can cross multiply to remove the fraction. So that's B times tan 50, which is B tan 50 is equivalent to 1 times 5, which is 5. So to find B, simply divide by tan 50, which is multiplying. So the moment we divide by tan 50, we are left with the value for B. So our B, that's 5 divided by tan 50, in this case, 5. Make sure that your calculator is in degrees. There must be a D here on your calculator there. All right, so it's 5 divided by tan 50, tan 50 degrees. All right, so which is something like 4.19. Uh, five, but the five is going to change the nine into 10, changes one into two. So it's going to be 4,20 centimeters. I do not know the units. Let me not rush to say centimeters. Okay, we are just given A is five. So we do not know the units. So we just leave it like that. The units here, we do not know. All right, so that was the question 4.12. 4.2. Given that angle A is equal to 38.2, angle B, this and that, uh, calculate the value of, so this one, we are just calculating direct with your calculator, uh, with your calculator. Okay, so that's 4.2. Uh, we are given the value of A, the value, so course, guys, we're supposed to rewrite that identity that you're given. So we've got two cosec of A plus cos 3B, so that is cos 3B. All right, so cosec, remember that cosec is taken from one over sine. So this is same as two times one over sine. All right, so take note, guys. So it's two by one over sine A, then whatever that we get here, we add to cos 3B. All right, so we can insert the values, guys, because we have got these values here. A is there, so you're going to say 2 multiplied by 1 over sine A, which is 32, 38,2 degrees. Whatever that we get here, we add to cos 3B, which is cos 3 times B. So our B is 146. That's 146,4 degrees. Okay, so that was the question that we are, that we are given, and we are um, asked to just simplify that. Okay, so on your calculator, yeah, that's the job. Guys, for you now to simplify from your calculator, uh, what are you going to have? So it's two multiplied to one over uh, sine. That's a sine here, guys. Sine. Take note, we said sine there. So it's one over sine, uh, 38.2, 38,2. Right, close the major bracket. Then we move on to plus cos. Okay, so this is cos three times, that's three times 146. Okay, that's 146,4. 146,4, close that bracket. And we've got your answer, which is 3,421, which is uh, 3,421. Cannot change that. So it's going to be 3,42. All right, so that's the value that you are going to have. Uh, on 4.3, simplify fully without the use of a calculator. So there, the calculator is not even required. They say it without. Without the use of a calculator, we need to know the value for sine 45 multiplied to tan squared 60 degrees, everything over course uh, 45 degrees. Okay, so this is one of the nicest equations that you need to know from your special angles of 45 degrees, 60 uh, we know that we've got these two most important triangles that they which contain the special angles. 
All right, so we've got these two important triangles here. Uh, if this is 45 degrees, this is 45 degrees. We know that this is going to be one, one square root of two. Uh, if this is uh, 30 degrees, not 30, but 60 degrees. So it can be 30, it can be 60, guys. Okay, uh, this is going to be one, two, square root of three. I actually understand if I draw it this way. Uh, maybe you've got your own way of drawing these two triangles, but the values are the same. So what you simply need is to substitute the values that you are given here. Uh, that's sine 45. We know that uh, from our soccer toe, uh, soccer toe uh, here. Sine, that's the opposite of uh, the hypotenuse. So 45, you can take either way. You can use this 45, the opposite. That's our one here over the hypotenuse. So it's one over square root of two. So you're going to have one over square root of two multiplied to tan squared 60. So tan squared 60 is the same way as writing it as. Okay, it's the same as writing as tan 60 squared like this. Okay, so that's your tan squared 60, it's tan 60 squared, of which tan, uh, that's opposite over adjacent. So according to 60 here, the opposite is the square root of three, the adjacent, that's our one. So we've got uh, square root of three over one. So it's adjacent, uh, opposite of adjacent, which is a square root of three over one. So it is going to be square root of three, over one squared. Over square root of three is just square root of three, guys. Okay, everything over cos 45, but remember that cos 45 and sine 45, they are equal. So we are just to take the same value, which is one over square root of two. Or you can even simplify from your calculator cos adjacent of hypotenuse. That's the adjacent here, which is one over the hypotenuse, which is square root of two. So as we can see that these two are the same, they can cancel out. So you are just left with the square root of three squared, of which square root of three squared is equal to three. Or you can use your calculator, but from your laws of states, guys, you must know that square root of three, uh, when it is being squared, it gives you uh, a three. It's give you that number that you're given there. All right, so it's like square root of A times square root of A, it gives you A. So that's the concept that you can also use in short. All right, so that was uh, uh, the question. Then, so I actually had four marks. And on question 4.4, we are now given, uh, okay, let me just remove some of these that uh, they are not even necessary, okay? On question 4.4, we are given that cos five cos theta minus three is equal to zero. Solve, uh, okay, so we are asked to solve. If alpha plus beta is equal to 90 degrees, alpha plus beta, alpha plus beta, is 90 and alpha is less than calculate the value of cot alpha, cot alpha, cot alpha. All right. So let's start with the uh, first things first, guys. We are given the value of uh, cos so far. Uh, and we are given that this is uh, in between. Um, okay, let's just have this. Are we gonna win? I'm, okay, let me just present this way. Okay, 5.4.4. I'm just going to use this concept, uh, this easier. We, I, I, I actually understand the quadrants. They are very, very much easier to work with, uh, but having a diagram in that quadrant is the most important thing. So yeah, given that five cos beta is e minus three is equal to zero. So the first thing that we need is to have the ratio for cos beta here. All right, so from five cos beta, we can transpose the negative three to the other side of the equation. So it's going to be a positive three. So if we divide by five by five, we can note that cos beta is equivalent to three over five. All right. So if cos beta is equivalent to three over five, and we know that for cos from our soca to our soca, cos that's adjacent over the hypotenuse. So this is the ratio for adjacent over hypotenuse, which lies in the first quadrant from zero to 90 degrees. Take note, we are given from zero to 90 degrees our beta. So that's in the first quadrant. So uh, in the first quadrant, we can have our triangle like this in the first quadrant, all right? This is what you're going to have. And this is where we have our beta here, all right? And we are given this consideration that alpha, okay, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's focus with the beta first, okay? So according to this course that we see here, it's adjacent of hypotenuse, which is according to this beta, uh, our adjacent, is going to be this side. So this is our adjacent and this is the hypotenuse. So this is where we have the adjacent here, adjacent, okay? 
which is three. This is three over five, okay? So this is going to be three, and this is going to be five, all right? So you can play around with the Pythagoras theorem so that you can calculate the third side here, which is going to give you a four, okay? Uh, from uh, our Pythagoras, remember that C squared is equal to A squared plus uh, B squared. So we, we, we were already given here, this was the hypotenuse square that we have, which is five. So five squared is equal to uh, the shorter side, which is three squared plus B squared. So you can calculate the other side, which is B. Five squared, that is 25 minus, if you transpose three squared to this side, but three squared, that is nine, which is equal to B squared. So 25 minus nine, that's 16. So B squared is equal to 16. You can find the square root of both sides which means B is plus or minus four. So our B is going to be a four. So this side, if you are to calculate it, it was going to give you a four from the Pythagoras theorem. Okay, so these are some of the things that you might not be told to do, but you are supposed to know them uh, or to apply them. Okay, anyways, the question is, if alpha plus beta is equal to 90 degrees, let's start with this, and our alpha is less than 90 degrees from zero to nine, it's actually less. So it means, this is where your alpha is going to be, guys. This is a right angle triangle where this is your beta here. So definitely your alpha is going to be at this point. Remember, if you are given, a right, let me take you back to your right angle, the way that you are used. If this is a 90 degrees like this, if this angle here is 40 degrees, okay, this angle will be 50 degrees. So that 40 plus 50, that's 90 plus nine, which is 180. The same thing that you see here from these two triangles, guys, we say this is 90, this is 60, this is that from those special angles. These two angles, if you add them, they give you 90 degrees. So that is what the question is actually referring to, that uh, these two angles, which is alpha and the beta, they must give you 90. So definitely alpha has to be here and beta there. So the question now is to find the value of cot alpha. That was the question, find the value of cot alpha. All right, so where are we going to have cot alpha? Remember that cot, that is uh, cot, not cos. Okay, so this is cot alpha. So cot uh, alpha, remember cot is one over tan, it's going to be one over tan alpha, okay? And we know that from our tan tor, okay, that's tan tor opposite over the adjacent. So we've got uh, according to alpha, not according to beta, but according to this alpha here, our opposite is three. This is our opposite here, which is three. And the adjacent, according to this alpha, that's the adjacent, which is for uh, this angle in 90 degrees, they are adjacent to each other. All right, so that means uh, we are going to use that ratio, so which means uh, we are going to obtain one over, uh, remember we said tan alpha, it's opposite over adjacent. So it's going to be one over the opposite, which is three over the adjacent. Okay, let me just use, maintain the one that I had. So it's three over the adjacent, which is four. So one divided by three over four, that's actually equivalent to cot alpha, which is four over three. That's the inverse of that number. Or we can just divide from our calculator, one divided by three over four. That simply means the inverse, guys. Please know this concept. Okay, so that's four over three. There can be so many ways that you can actually apply or use. Um, yeah, so many ways. Uh, let me know if you had any other way, maybe even uh, applying identities. Some they can even end up using identities. Let me know, guys, uh, so that it can actually help others as we are revising as much questions at Maison African Motives. Okay, on question number five, we are given in the sketch below triangle M and P. All right, we are given triangle M and P. Here is right angled at N. All right, the whole triangle, the bigger triangle M and P. Okay, it's right angled here at N. Okay, we can see the right angle at N there. Then M and 15 units. A is the midpoint. Okay, A here is the midpoint of uh, PN. That's why we are given this distance equal from N to A and from A to P. These two are equal. Uh, and we've got an angle of 21 degrees here, which is uh, A, M, N, this angle at A here. All right, so okay, that, was the, that was the triangle. So the first question is to calculate uh, A, N. That's three marks for that, to calculate A, N. Okay, let's see, what do we have? 
from A to N, uh, we are now back to our identities. Now it's an application of identities, guys. Okay, so from your identities, uh, we can even try and work it aside here. That's 5.11. Okay, so you're gonna have 5.11, we need to calculate a n. All right, so from our uh, ratios, trigonometrical ratios, we can see that according to the angle that we have, because we are given a right angle triangle here, according to this angle of 21, a n is the opposite, it faces this side, so we've got an opposite here, and m n, the one that we are given, that's our adjacent, it's adjacent to each other, then a m, that's the hypotenuse. Okay, as we are focusing on a n, so which ratio actually uses opposite and adjacent at the same time? This is the question that you're supposed to ask yourself. There is only one ratio, which is got the opposite and adjacent at the same time from your Sokatoa. Which one is that one? All right, so let's list them down and see what you're going to have. So opposite and adjacent is only found on tan here. That's where we have the opposite over the adjacent. So we can write our ratio as the tan of theta is equivalent to the opposite over the adjacent. So if it is opposite over adjacent, therefore let's substitute what we have. So you're gonna have tan, the theta, which is the angle here of 21 degrees, which is equivalent to opposite over adjacent. The opposite is a n, the one that you are calculating and the adjacent is the 15. So to find a n, we can simply cross multiply because this is some like a over one. So we can cross multiply one times a n, that's a n, which is equal to 15 times tan 21. So we've got 15 tan 21 degrees. So this can give us a n. So that's it guys, just like that. Okay, 15 tan uh, 21 degrees, uh, this is going to be 5,759, which is 5,76. So we've got 5,76 units. Uh, we are given the other dimensions as 15 units. So this is just going to be units. Okay. If it was centimeters, then you write it as centimeters. All right. Then on 5.12 PMQ, we are now asked to calculate the angle uh, PMQ. All right. That's the angle PMN. What am I saying? PMN. Okay. That's three marks for that. Okay, this is where we have our angle P, M, N uh, from the point P here, from point P to M to N, the whole of this angle. Take note, before we were given the 21, the 21, the 21 covers only this part here. This is our 21. Okay, so what can we do? We can actually work with a bigger triangle since uh, we are given that this is uh, A to N, it's uh, 5,76, but remember before we are told that this is a midpoint and we are even given an indication that these two lines are equal, A, N, and uh, A, P. So it means if this is 5,76, this is also 5,76. So you can have the whole length of this line, which is the line uh, P, N. So you just have to add 5,76 times two or 5,76 plus 5,76, all right. 5,76 times 2. That is 11,52. So you're going to have 11,52 units. All right. So if we have put 11,52 according to the bigger triangle that we have, this side here, according to the angle M that we want to calculate, the whole of this side becomes the opposite. All right. Then the MN remains as the adjacent, even on the bigger triangle, it remains according to angle M. It's the, still the adjacent. So that means I can actually work with, uh, with that. Okay, I can work with this because I've got tan there, opposite and adjacent, I'm back again to tan. So this is 5.12. So tan of theta is equivalent to opposite over the adjacent. So we can substitute the tan of the angle that we are supposed to calculate. Which angle we calculated? That's angle M which is PMN. Okay, so it's going to be tan PMN. PMN is equivalent to the opposite. The opposite that is the side PN. We calculated PN, the wall of this PN is 11,52 units. Okay, that's 11,52 units. So it is going to be 11,52 units over the adjacent, which is the A, the MN, which is already there which is 15, so it's going to be over 15. So that's what you're going to have. Okay, so to find P, M, N, which is the angle here, we are just going to use arctan. So P, M, N, 
is equivalent to actan of the answer there, which is 11,52 over 15. So actan simply means shift turn. So it's shift turn uh, 11.52 over 15, depending with the calculator that you are using. All right, so make sure that your calculator also is in degrees, okay? So they must be a D here. So this is 37,52, which is, uh, yes, 37,52 degrees. 37,52 degrees. Okay, so that's the angle P, M, N, one that you're given to find or to calculate from this question. Uh, we can check the, there is another part which is calculate or find the value of M, P. Okay, where do we have M, P, M, P? Sorry for that. All right, so we need uh, M, P here. Uh, that's from M to P. There can be so many ways. Uh, MP, that's this one from M here to P. Okay, here yeah. from M to P, this is the length. So they can be so many ways because uh, remember, we, we, we have the side PM, PN, MN. So you can actually use Pythagoras theory because this is a right angle triangle. Okay, so you can use Pythagoras, tri uh, Pythagoras theorem. Uh, yes, yes, so I mean, uh, this one, you can use it, the ratios, any applicable ratio, as long it is fine, you can use that. So uh, MP can be given as the square root of, uh, since it is the hypotenuse, so it's the square root of MN squared. So it is going to be the square root of MN squared plus the other side, which is NP squared or PN squared. All right, so that's what you're going to have. So that's our MP, which is going to be the square root of, um, if we are to check uh, MN, yeah, that's 15. So it's going to be 15 squared plus PN squared. Remember, we calculated PN here, yeah, the wall of this PN, we said it's 11,52, the wall of this length. So it's going to be 11,52 squared. All right, so that's the length, 11,52 squared from your Pythagoras theorem. So like I said, there can be so many ways. Okay, an applicable manner or applicable way of doing this, guys, is uh, can be marked. Okay, so that's 11.52 squared, uh, which is 18.913, which is 18.91, 18.91. Okay, so it's going to be 18.91 units. So that's the length. So depending with the method that you have used, sometimes you might not you might not obtain exactly this answer that we had. It depends with the values that, because we are rounding off these values. So sometimes it might not be that direct. Okay, on 5.2, we are now given to solve. Okay, this has nothing to do with this information. Let's remove it. Uh, we are given calculate theta. If um, two sine theta plus 15 is equivalent to, and theta ranges from zero to nine. So we are given zero to nine, that is the first quadrant. That is, we are working with all the positive angles there. All right, so we are given two sine of theta plus 15 degrees equivalent to 1,462. So the first thing we can remove the two, it has nothing to do with sine, so divide it by both sides. So that means sine theta plus 15 degrees is equivalent to, if we divide these two, you're gonna have 1,462 divided by two, which is 0, 0.731, like that. Okay, so remember, guys, the same way, like what you do, if it was sine A is equal to 0, 0.2, for you to find A, it is going to be at sine on the other answer there, on the other value, which is shift sine. So it's the same thing. We are going to calculate the value of uh, theta plus 15 degrees. Okay, so that means here, Theta plus 15 degrees is equivalent to the arc sign of the answer that you're going to have from your calculator there. So theta plus 15, that's shift sign zero comma, uh, that number that we have. So shift sign uh, zero comma seven three one, that will be 49 comma, yeah, 46 comma seven nine. Okay, 46 comma seven nine, 46 comma seven nine degrees, okay. So for, to find theta, definitely we are supposed to transpose to the other side of the equation. That would be a negative 15 degrees. Okay, so your theta is going to be 46, 46, 97 minus 15 degrees. Okay, so that can be your theta, which is 31, 97. So you've got 31, 97 degrees. Okay, so that was... Uh, uh, 5.2, having a total of three marks and the whole of question five, 
of marks. So that's what we actually had from question number five. So guys, this is actually amazing. So you're gonna move on to question uh, five, question six. Now on question number six, let's see what do we have. Okay, so here we are given that the graphs, uh, we are given two graphs, f of x, which is equivalent to a, uh, that's a sine x, then uh, this is our f of x, okay, which is our a sine x, then we are given gx, uh, which is uh, cos x plus one, it's already there from zero to 360 as sketched. Okay, 6.1, write down the value of a, okay, from the sine here, so techno, this is your sine, but, we can check that this is a, a normal uh, sine graph that we know, which starts at zero, uh, 90, which is basis two. Okay, so it has changed on the maximum value there. It's now two, and here we have got uh, a four, a minus two. So to find the value of A, we are going to just add the maximum minus the minimum divided by two. So it's maximum minus minimum divided by two, which is our maximum is two minus the minimum, which is negative two over two, and that will be a two. That is the amplitude value for sine, which is at what? Which is at a two then. Okay, so that was it. Uh, then 6.2, write down the period of F. So F, this sign, where does it complete its cycle? That's a, a period. It completes its cycle at 360, guys. Check here from zero to 180, half cycle. 180 to 360, that's a full cycle. So here it completes at 360 degrees. Okay, then uh, 6.3, write down the range of G. Okay, the range of G. G is going to range from where to where, that is uh, the range. Okay, if we can check our G here, the minimum value of G is at Y is equal to zero here. Then the maximum value of G is at two. So it ranges from zero to two. Okay, so that's where we shall have the values of y and g ranging from zero to, to two. Okay, 6.4, for which values of x between uh, x in the interval from zero to 360, will f of x by gx be greater than zero? Okay, uh, for this one, guys, you, you have got two functions that we have. What it simply means is that, okay, let me write it down. Okay, I want to explain this way. Maybe you can understand me. Let me write it down. Okay, 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 all right. We do not want this to happen. All right, I never... Okay, I want to write this down here. Okay, let me just remove some of the other parts, but we know the answers. Okay, for you to have this, uh, for the values of X, this is 6.4. We need a condition where we've got F of X by gx is greater than a zero. Okay, that's a greater than. So for you to have this value, your f of x, we need our answer to be greater than zero, which means our answer is supposed to be a positive. Any number, it can be one, it can be two, it must be a positive. So for you to have a positive, it's either these two, they are positive. It's either your f of x is positive, then your gx is positive. Because positive times positive gives you a positive. Or it's either these two, they are both negative. So that's where we need these graphs. Okay, where they are both positive or both negative. Okay, if we are to check on our graph here, uh, let's start from this, our graph here, from zero here to, okay, from zero, 90, they are still, they're all positive. They're in the positive region here on top, they're on top up to 180 degrees. The moment we move from 180, our F is now in the negative, but our G is in the positive. So positive times negative, this one gives you a negative. So this is actually wrong. So our answer is supposed to be taken from zero here, where all of these, they're in the positive, up to 180, where all of these, they are positive. So that means our X in this case, uh, that's 6.4, it is going to be greater than zero. All right, so our X here, our X is going to be greater than zero, but less than 180, okay, degrees. If it was written like this, F, uh, F, of, F of X by GX is greater than or equal to, then your answer was going to have 
the equal to there, but we are not given that equal to, so that is not going to work, all right? That is not going to, to work for this one. So take note about the type of question that you're given. So this one is just going to be greater than and less than. All right, 6.5, the graph of G uh, is reflected about the x-axis and then shifted two units upwards to obtain the graph of H, write down the equation of H. Okay, the graph of G. Let's take the graph of G first. The graph of G is given as cos X plus one. All right, so I'm gonna have this here and I'm going to explain it on this side. All right, so that was our GX first in the original place, which was given as cos X plus one. All right. Let's start with the reflection part. If it is reflected in the x-axis, I always say I always say this, you multiply the function by a negative. If it is gx, then it's negative gx. That's a reflection in the x-axis. So that means your hx is going to be first uh, multiply uh, gx, okay, by a negative. That is, that is a reflection, okay? After that, this graph is then shifted two units upwards. Remember, if you are shifting up, or down, you apply to that way because you are affecting the values of y there. So up, you add, down, you subtract. This is down, you subtract. All right, so in this case, it moved two units up, so we are going to add two to this value. So that is the consideration. Okay, so let's find our hx. So hx is equivalent to negative times gx. This is your gx here which is cos x plus one. So you're going to multiply cos of x plus one. Whatever that you get, you're going to add a two. All right, so that means your hx is going to be negative times cos, that's negative cos x, negative times one, which is negative one plus two. All right, so it affects the values of y, the two only it affects the value of y. So hx is going to be equivalent to negative cos x, negative one plus two, that's a positive one. So that is what you're going to have as the final answer. Okay, let me know, guys, if you hit any other way that you use to find or to determine the same answer, just like the one that you're having. So that was question six, having a total of uh, uh, a total of eight marks, all of question six. All right, so we're going to move on to question number seven. Uh, let's see what we were given what we were given, what we were given. Okay. On question number seven, we are given the diagram below represents the cross section of peaks of uh, table mountains. Okay, so these are peaks of uh, table mountain. Uh, so here we have to be very, very careful, guys. We have to be very, very careful. Okay, T, uh, okay, table mountain T and lion heads L, Okay, above sea level, points M and N are directly below peaks uh, L and T respectively, such that M, P, N, M, P, N here is a straight line, which is a horizontal plane to the sea directly above C. Okay, so this is uh, actually a vertical line, okay? Um, then M, N is 3,100 meters from M, A to N, okay? Then we are given the angle of elevation of L from N, okay. L here from N, this one is beta, and the angle of elevation of T from M, this one is theta. If it is given that tan theta is this and that, okay, and tan theta is that and that. That's the information. So the question is, calculate the ratio of the line L M to T M. All right. That's L M over T M then. Uh, okay, so this one, guys, there is a lot. There is a lot that we are supposed to work with. Okay, let's check we have our LM. Uh, this is where we have our LM, this one, okay? And our TM here, all right. So uh, from the information that we have so far, so far, guys, we have got limited information. We are only given the ratios and the distance of uh, the 3,100 uh, meters. Okay, let's work with these ratios that we are given. We need the ratio. Okay, so let's take 7.11. Okay, 7.1, I'm just gonna take this way. Let's start with the given ratios. Um, we are given LM as to LT, uh, as to TN, L, M, LM, 
tends to Tn. All right. Uh, just the letters, the letters, the way they are, it's confusing. Anyways, uh, what you're going to see is that we are given the, the ratios. Let's start with this because that's what you only have for the meantime. We are given that tan theta is uh, 0 0.35, that's tan of this theta here. And we know that tan from our soccer toward that's toward there, which is opposite over the adjustment. So tan theta, we are referring to the opposite here. This is the opposite, according to theta, the opposite sides is the opposite is Tn, that's the opposite, and the adjacent, that's the Mn here, that's the adjacent, okay? Uh, that's our adjacent, according to theta, okay? So that means uh, we can write something about this here, tan theta, the tan theta is equivalent opposite over adjacent, and we are referring to tan theta equal to 0, 0,35, 0, 0,35. Okay, so I'm gonna take this as 0, 0,35 because we have the value for tan theta, that's 0, 0,35 is equal to the opposite. The opposite is Tn. Okay, so for the meantime, just write it as Tn over uh, the corresponding side here, which is Mn. So the corresponding side, it's uh, Mn. Okay, so let's just write it as Mn. That's M N in this case. Okay. Uh, I want you to see something here. There is M N. Okay. Let's ignore this one. Okay. Are you understand me? You understand me definitely. You must do that. Okay. Then we move on to tan beta. There is a ratio for tan beta there, which is 0, 0,21. And still tan is opposite of adjacent. So that means 0, 0,21 is equal. What is the opposite according to tan beta? This is your beta here. And this is the opposite side. And the adjacent is still MN. So it's opposite, which is uh, LM. Okay, so it's going to be LM. Let me write it here. LM, 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 like this. Over the same side, which is MN, which is uh, the, the adjacent. Yes, we've got the value for MN. We know that MN is equivalent to 3,100 meters. You can even write it down. But what I wanted you to see actually is that these two, they are the same, Mn here, Mn here. So can we just write Mn in terms of uh, Tn? That's it. Then we equate those ones. We can do that, then we are done. Because we need to know with the ratio of Lm as to Tn, and we've got Tn here, Lm, Mn and Mn, they are equal. So let's just find Mn, since Mn and Mn, they are equal. So solve for Mn or make Nn the subject. Make Mn the subject or solve for Mn, okay? I'm just gonna say solve for Mn, okay? By solving for Mn, there is a miracle that is going to happen there. If we are to cross multiply, I want you to see we're going to have 0, 0.35 Mn, which is equal to Tn. You can use that one as 3,100, it's fine. Then you divide by 0, 0.35 here by 0, 0.35. This can cancel. So Mn is equal to Tn over 0, 0.35. Okay, if we are to solve the same way here, we are going to see that our Mn is going to be equal to Mm over 0, 0.21. Okay, but these two here, they are equal. Mn and Mn is equal. So if Mn is equal to Mn, therefore I can simply equate the values for Mn here, which is Tn over 0, 0.35. So it is going to be Tn over 0, 0.35, which is equal to the other Mn here, which is Lm over 0, 0.21. Guys, this was so amazing. Okay, so if you can understand this information, you can go far, guys. Okay, anyways, uh, that's it. Uh, play around because all you need is to find the ratio of LMS2. Okay, noting that to find the ratio of LMS to TN, it is the same thing as finding the ratio of LM over TN. So if we can find LM over TN, then we are done. So what can we do to find LM over TN? This is what we have here, LM and TN. So if you divide these two, I want you to understand, guys, if you divide these two, Lm over Tn, you have to also divide the corresponding in terms of the ratios, which is going to be 0, 0,21 over the corresponding side, which is 0, 0,35. Guys, that's it. 
you have got your ratio. All right. Or you can write it direct. If you can write it as LM as to TN like this, then you take LM 0, 0,21 as to 0, 0,35. That's it. But you can reduce. It's a ratio, guys. It can be reduced. Okay. 0, 0,21 over this, if you are to reduce this, is same as uh, 0, 0,21 over 0, 0.35, that's something like three over five. So this is equivalent to three over five. All right, so that is the same thing. Here it's going to give you three S to five. So that's the ratio that we have of LM S to N, M S to TN, that is three S to five. All right, so that, that's it, that's it. Um, on number 7.2, we are given that a cable car C traveling from the top of uh, table mountain T follows the path along T C M. Okay, T to C to M. So it followed it this way from T here to C, then to M straight. Okay, so it actually took straight way. That is T C M. Okay, let's see what happened after doing this. Um, then on seven point two one, they are asking us to calculate the angle found. The angle formed MTN between the cable and the vertical height TN. Okay, there's an angle which was formed, MTN, is that so? Okay, let's check, M to T to N. Okay, so you've got this MTN here. All right, uh, so the, the question is for us to calculate the angle, the angle, the angle, the angle, this angle here. All right. So let's just say this angle, it's uh, actually alpha like that. Okay, this is, uh, we are given that these two lines is actually an angle of elevation. So the angle at N here is at 90 degrees, all right? So for us to find the angle alpha here, which is at T, we simply have to subtract these two angles from 180, or you find one, then you subtract both these two angles, alpha, and theta, they must add up to 90 degrees. I think I, I talked about that thing uh, earlier on. So there were so many ways to have that. Okay, so uh, 7.21, the angle MTN, the angle MTN is just going to be 180 degrees minus the angles inside this triangle, which is angle N of 90 degrees and angle M, which is theta degrees. Okay, so it's going to be 90 plus theta. Okay, that's 90 uh, degrees plus uh, theta, if we can find theta. Or someone can simply go into use this way. Uh, since I said these two angles, they must add up to 180. Alpha and theta, that one, which is MTN. You can use this way. Angle MTN added to angle theta, they must give us 90 degrees. So those are two options. Okay, so all you need is to find the angle theta. So where can you have angle theta? Remember here we are given the, the ratio for tan here. We are given that our tan theta is equal to 0, 0,3, whatever that we have. So that means we can play around this ratio here since we are given that tan theta is 0, 0,35. So theta is equal to arctan of 0, 0,35. Remember the same way guys that we used to calculate the angles. So same is beta arctan 0, 0,21, something like that. Okay, so you're gonna have shift tan of 0, 0,35, okay, 0, 0,35, which is going to be 19,29 degrees. Okay, so that's 19,29 degrees. So we are given that if our angle theta is 19,29 degrees, therefore uh, we can calculate the other angles theta, that's 19,29 degrees. So that means we can have our angle MTN as 180 degrees minus 90 degrees plus 19, 0.29 degrees, or you can use this way, MTN here is going to be equal to what? If we transpose the angle theta, it's going to be 90 degrees minus theta. So it's actually 90 minus theta on the other side. Okay, so if it is 90 minus theta, therefore our theta is 19,29 degrees. So you can subtract those two. All right, so that's it. Uh, either way, you can obtain the same answer. Uh, 180 degrees, so you're going to have 180 minus the sum of the two, which is 90 plus 19,29.
All right. So that will be 70,71 degrees. Okay, so this is going to be 70,71 degrees, which is the same thing that you're going to obtain here, 70,71 degrees. So that's our angle, uh, MTN. Okay, so we've got angle MTN here. All right, so we're going to indicate our MTN as uh, 71, 70,91, 70,71 degrees. Okay. That's the angle at T, the MTN. Okay, let's check the other part of the question. Uh, we are now given on question 7.22, if the cable car C travels along the cable, such so that TC it's uh, 400 meters, so we're now given that TC is 400 meters, calculate the height of the car cable above sea level at the instant. All right, so we are given that this cable, it travels uh along the cable c c here so this is our c right this is where our c is situated at so c is traveling across the cable all right that's where our c is traveling across the the cable there and we are given what are we given let's see guys and tc is 400 tc okay from t to c it's 400 meters, all right, we are given here, TC being uh, 400 meters, all right. So that means here there is a need for us to have this length here because we are moving from C to point M here. So there are two things that we need. Uh, theta, we already have theta, guys, remember we calculated theta, we got 19. Uh, comma two nine degrees. Okay, so the question is asking us to calculate this here. Uh, calculate the height of the cable of the car above sea level at the instant before it moves. At the instant, that is this distance here above sea level. That is from point C to P. So this is the distance that we are supposed to calculate. So, so far, guys, we have got limited information. We only have the angle inside this triangle. All right. If we can have the side either MC or MP, then we can calculate this. Uh, we can calculate uh, this length. MP, we do not have. MC, we do not have. But we are given this distance from C to T that it is 400 meters. So there is something that we are supposed to do from MT, do we have distance MT? Did we calculate MT before MT, MT? All right, we do not have MT, but if we are to get back here, there's something that we said about MT. All right, we never used it. We never used, we never, we never used that one. So which means we are, we are forced to calculate the MT now. All right, so let's do that guys. Let's calculate our MT. Uh, by calculating MT, it is going to help us now to calculate uh, this distance because MC is equivalent to MT minus TC, this distance of 400, because we've got 400 meters there. All right, so let's find MC. All right, can I just use this information here? Can I just, okay, let me just use this part here. So we need uh, a lot of things here. That's why they've got five marks. So, um, that's a lot. All right, so that's 7.22. Uh, we said we're gonna need MC, which is part of the diagram because I need to use this diagram here, this triangle, this triangle, this one. This is the triangle that we are going to use. This triangle here, uh, C to M to P, then back to C, this triangle here. So we need MC. Okay, so MC is the difference between the two sides, so MC, it's actually equivalent to MT, which is the whole of this line here, this MT here minus TC, the one that we are given, this one, TC. So we are going to subtract TC, uh, which is 400 meters. All right, so MT, where do we have our MT? To find MT, we can see that we have got the length MN, which is 3,100, and MT, that is the adjacent according to the angle, of 19,9, uh, this is the hypotenuse, and MN, this side, is the adjacent. So we need a ratio which uses the adjacent and the hypotenuse at the same time. That's Tasho, Tao, Soka, Toa. I don't know which one. So from your Soka, Toa, your cos is the one that 
consist of adjacent and hypotenuse. Okay, so we've got the cos of the theta, which is the angle that we are given here, cos theta, that is cos 19, 29. So it's cos 19, 2,9, of which cos theta, guys, we have it. Okay, let me write it this way. I'm actually, cos theta, that's adjacent over hypotenuse. Already cos theta here, we have was this theta we obtained from, uh, okay, this was tan, not cos. Okay, so it's fine. So that's cos 19, I thought we, it was tan. I thought it was cos, okay, it was tan. So that's cos 19, 29 degrees is equal to the adjacent, which is our adjacent here, which is 3,100 meters. So it is going to be 3,100 meters over the hypotenuse, that is the side that we are supposed to call the whole of this length, which is MT. So we are going to divide by MT, that is how we are going to have our MT. So you can cross multiply here to clear up the fractions, then we divide by MT both sides. Uh, this will be MT cos 19,29 degrees, which is equal to 3,100 divided by um, cos 19,29. So if we divide by cos 19,29 both sides, cos 19,29 degrees both sides, this can cancel. We can have our MT. All right, so what are you going to have? 3,100 uh, divided by cos... All right, divide by cos 19, 2, 9 degrees. Okay, this is going to give us 3284. 3, okay, so you're going to have something like 3284,39. Okay, so that's 3284,39 units or meters. Okay, this is actually in meters. Okay, so remember the purpose of finding MT is because we need to find the value of MC here. So MC is going to be MT, which is 3,284.39 minus TC, which is TC is 400. Okay, so if you subtract this, uh, what are you going to have at the end? 3,284.39 minus 400. Okay, so if you subtract 400, this will be 2,884,39. Okay, so it's 2,884,39. Three, nine meters, we have got our MC. But this is not the question, guys. We just calculated this distance here from M to C, this one, okay? Which is uh, M here to point C. This is the one that we calculated, which is 2884.39 meters. Okay, so now we can calculate this distance because the question, remember what I said about the question, the question is asking you to calculate the height of the cable, that is uh, uh, the height of the cable car above sea level at the instant, which is CP. So we are supposed to calculate this length CP. All right, so what can we do to calculate CP, guys? What do we have? We have according to 19,9, we have got the hypotenuse here, and this side that we are supposed to calculate is the opposite. Okay, so which ratio uses opposite and hypotenuse at the same time? That's so, which is sine. All right, so we are going to apply the ratio of sine theta, which is opposite over hypotenuse. So that's sine of the theta, the theta, that is the angle that we are given of 19,29 degrees, which is equal to the opposite, which is the side that we are supposed to calculate. That's our opposite, which is CP. So you can write that one as CP. So it is going to be CP over the hypotenuse, which is the side of MC that we just calculated now, 288. 4,39. Okay, so that's it. We can calculate our CP. This is same as over one. So you can cross multiply here to find CP. So it's one times CP. That is CP is equal to these two. They multiply each other. 284.39 multiplied to sine 19.29 degrees. We can obtain our CP. All right, so that's the side CP, which is the side above the sea level from the instant that is at the beginning where this actually started. All right, so that's what you're going to have. Okay, sorry for that, guys. Okay, sorry for this. I just need my calculator here. So it's 2.39 times sine 
this is sine 19.29, sine 19.29 degrees like that. So you're going to have 952,86, 952,86 if you round off properly. All right. So that's 9.2, 9.52,86 meters. Okay, it was actually a lot. I just hope we saw that, guys, everything that was happening. And uh, yeah, just have to revise as much as you can. Uh, it's actually easy. If we can revise as much question papers, it would be more easier than what it seems right now. On question number eight, we are now given uh, we are now given a condition to give reasons on whatever that is going to happen. Complete the following statement. If opposite sides of a quadrilateral are equal, then the quadrilateral is. If opposite sides of a quadrilateral are equal, if opposite sides of a quadrilateral are equal, then the quadrilateral is. So uh, it can be a rectangle. If both rectangle, guys, opposite sides of a rectangle, they're equal. It can be a parallelogram. So this statement, they uh, that that um, that that part is is not is wrong to just say uh, we just have one shape. We do not. There are so many shapes that we can have. We as long as it's a quadrilateral. Okay, we can uh, work with a rhombus. We can work with uh, a rectangle. We can work with a um, parallelogram. So in this case, I can just give these two answers here. Parallelogram. All right, so that's what you can actually have from these two. Um, use the sketch below to prove that the opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal. Okay, use this sketch. So I give in a sketch, guys, and we want to prove that the opposite sides of a program, they are equal. So uh, if you are dealing with the proofs, guys, uh, proofs is something that you're supposed to know or to understand or to even memorize if possible, guys. Okay, so in this case, what you are going to do, uh, I'm going to work out my proof here so that you we, we understand me uh, properly here. So on 8.2, I'm going to work with the triangle uh two triangles they've got two triangles that are being separated you can even separate this way but already they separated for us so i'm going to triangle a b d and the other triangle which you see uh d b these two triangles okay so these are the triangles that i'm going to use okay so using triangle a b d and uh triangle uh b c c d b or whatever Okay, whatever way that we can take CDB or CBD. Okay, so from these two triangles, I want you to note something. They are angles which are equal from these two angles. Okay, so we want to take the type of triangles that we are going to have. Okay, I want you to see what is happening between this angle, which is at D1 here, all right? And this angle, which is at B2 here, they're actually equal alternate angles because these are parallel lines. Okay, so we are having alternate angles in this case. So the D1 that we have, uh, the B2 from, okay, from this triangle A, A, D, B, from this triangle, we have got D1, okay. So D1 is definitely equal. From this triangle, it's equivalent to B2. So those are actually alternate angles, okay? So we've got uh, alternate angles. They're the ones that create a Z, okay? Uh, do we have other angles that are equal also, okay? Uh, we can check again. Yes, we can use this one, B1 and D2. Okay, this angle, B1 here, and this angle, D2, they're equal. Again, we've got alternate angles there. As you can see, they are forming a Z. All right, so... From the first triangle, our angle is B1. So angle B1 is equal to angle D2 on the second triangle. Also, we've got alternate angles there. So definitely, it simply means that the remaining angles will be equal. Angle A here and angle C, definitely these are the remaining angles. So therefore, angle A is equal to angle C. These are the remaining angles in a triangle. So whenever you are dealing with remaining angles, uh, in a triangle, guys, they are equal. Even if you into a triangle, guys, 108, so two angles, they are equal. The remaining ones, they are equal. So from there, it simply means that uh, we're going to work with two things here. 
It's either we are going to work with similarity or we are going to work with congruence. But according to the equal part that we have of uh, this side BD, because BD is being shared by these two. All right. So if we are to share BD, which means we've got one side, which is the same. All right. These two sides, they will be equal at, at the same time. So that means these two triangles are going to be congruent. Okay, because we have got BD, which is common. So BD, sorry for that. I do not want this color. So we've got BD is common. Is common for both the given triangle. BD is common. So if BD is common, that means these two triangles, they are now congruent. We are no longer focusing with the similar figures. We are now focusing with congruent. Uh, because we shall see that the triangle, uh, the triangle ABD that we started with is going to be congruent to triangle uh, CDB. All right. So this side, they are equal. BD and BD will be equal. So it means AB is equal to CD. All right. So that means AB is equal to CD. Also, it means from A to D, it is equal from C to D. So that's A, D is equal to C, D. That's it. Um, yeah, A, D and C, B. What am I doing? What am I I'm seeing that these two are the same now? So this is C to B. All right. So our question was to prove that the opposite sides, they are parallel, they are equal, opposite sides. Okay, so let's see, uh, A, B, and C, D, A, B, C, D, these are opposite sides, okay? These are opposite sides, okay? So they are equal. A, D, and C, B, these are also opposite sides, they are equal. So we can see that truly they are equal. So that's congruent, congruent, congruence, congruence. In this sketch on 8.3, we are given there is a sketch and uh, from that sketch below K, P, we are given that uh, on this sketch, K, P, M, N is a parallelogram. So this is a parallelogram. Remember, we have already proved that opposite sides of parallelogram, they are parallel and uh, equal. So these, they are parallel and equal, parallel and equal, parallel and equal. So you're given that O, M, O, N uh, bisects, K N M K N M. So which means N one is equal to N two. So that's angle N one is equal to N two from the bisector. Okay. O M O M. This one bisects N uh, M P. So these two angles they are equal. So it means M one is equal to M two. These two angles are equal. Okay. On eight point three one, show that any O M is equal to ninety degrees. Any O, M, this one is supposed to be 90 degrees. We are supposed to show that. All right, which can be a long, long, long way to go. All right, so on proving, guys, you can't say you've got an answer direct. No, there, there are so many ways that we have to work with and uh, to consider. Okay, uh, so previously, remember, we referred to these two as they are equal. Uh, N1 and N2, M1 and M2 from what? From the bisectors that we are given. All right. If they are equal, let's just say, uh, because we want to prove that this is right, let's just introduce to say the angle N1 and uh, N2, which is equal, let it be equal to maybe M or N. Well, choose just N two letters of your choice. So this is M. Uh, let's just not use M because we've got M and N. I'm going to confuse you. So let me use X. Uh, M1 and M2, we can refer them as Y. So it means in place of uh, N1 here, I'm going to put X. In place of N2, I'm going to put X. In place of uh, M1 here, I'm going to put Y. So this is now Y here. And this is also a Y then. Okay. Remember, guys, remember, remember this about, uh, because this is, uh, this is a parallelogram, okay? So on a parallelogram, there are two things that you are going to have. These two sides, they actually add up to 180 from the core interior concept or from the properties of a program. We know that these two angles, 
they add up to 180. So angle N plus angle M is equal to 180 degrees from the properties of a program, or you can take it from what? From the core interior angles, okay? So you can refer this from the core interior angles. So you've got core interior angles. So that means we can find in terms of X uh, an expression for these two. Uh, M angle N is a combination of X plus X, which is two X plus M, which is a combination of Y plus Y, which is two Y gives us 108. You can divide by two each and every term so that we know the expression of X plus Y. So X plus Y gives us 90 degrees, okay. X and Y, they give us 90 degrees. And we have got X here and Y here giving us 90 degrees. So therefore, O2, this one, it's 90 degrees because uh, this is a triangle, guys, okay? Using triangle, okay, we've got triangle O N M O N M. So in triangle O N M, angle O2, okay, O2 plus, the two angles of X plus Y, we said X plus Y is 90. So O2 plus 90 degrees is equal to 180 degrees angles in a triangle. So therefore angle O2 is going to be 180 minus 90 degrees if we transpose, which is 90 degrees. And O2 is the one that is representing N O M. So therefore angle N O M is 90 degrees guys guys look what we had there is a lot there is a lot there is a lot there is a lot there is a lot, there is a lot. okay prove that o is the midpoint of kp all right what can we do to actually prove that this o is a midpoint it simply means that these two must be equal all right we have got a lot here guys again uh, these two must be equal. If O is the midpoint of KP, then it means from O to K and uh, from O to P, we've got equal distance. All right, that is what you're supposed to prove. So far, we have got uh, angles which are the same so far that we can take from the triangles that we can use uh let me remove some of the information I, 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 as for this question I, I want to work them near the diagram so that you can understand with the diagram that we have also uh so this is 8.32 we can check that there are some angles which are the same here this angle n2 is the same as this angle o1 they are creating a z again alternate angles so we've got angle n2 is also equal to angle O1, which is equal. Remember we said, let this angle be X. So that's an X there. So you've got alternate angles again. Uh, the same thing which happens between O3 and uh, M1 in, the, in, the, in, that, in that case. Do we have a Z? Do we have a Z? All right, we've got uh, a Z here. All right, M1 is also equal to O3. That's equal to Y. That's uh, alternate angles again. So we've got alternate angles again. Um, what else do we have? Uh, that's the M1 and O3, M1, M1 and O3. Okay, if we are to cross check here, these two, they are equal. Okay, let's start with this first. Okay, because now I'm in another triangle. Okay, so I want to take this information back of uh, any two being equal to O1, okay. O1, these two being equal together, these ones, any two here and uh, O1 is now X. Okay, so from this part, I want you to check what is happening in this triangle, uh, in the triangle K, any O. This was X, okay, N1 was X, O1 is now X because we can see that also N1 is equal to what is equal to O1 which is also equal to X. So these, uh, this actually gives us a consideration that KN and KO, they are equal, these two. These two sides, they're equal. This length here from K to O and uh, from K to N, they will be equal. Why? Best angles of a tri of an isosceles triangle, they are equal from the opposite sides, from these two sides, I mean, which are equal, okay? Opposite angles, they will be equal, which means opposite sides are equal from the base angles. So we can tell that 
from k to o, it is the same thing as from k to n. All right. But originally, we know that kn and pm, they are equal. So you must prove that uh, this, the remaining op, must be equal to o to pm. So this is what you're supposed to prove now, because already we know, okay? Uh, we must prove now that OP should be equal to PM. Why? Uh, since the angle, since this side of KN, since KN is equal to PM, these ones we are taking from the opposite sides of what? Of a parallelogram. Opposite sides of a parallelogram, they are equal. So for us to prove that OP is equal to PM, we are going to use this triangle now where I was actually referred to M1. M1 is equal to O3, which is uh, Y here. We proved this before. Uh, then we proved again before that M2 is Y. So you can see that M2 and O3, these two are equal. So if uh, in triangle, so this is actually in triangle OPM. In triangle OPM, we can see that angle O3 is equal to angle M2. So def definitely it makes OP to be equal to PM. These now become the best angles from the best angles of what? Of an associated triangle. That means these two sides, they are equal. So if we can prove that OP, like what we have done now, we have proved that OP is equal to PM. But here, okay, from, okay, so from, I can even write, guys, uh, let me just try and save this. Uh, it's now having a lot. It's now having a lot. I don't know what's happening. All right. Sorry for this delay. Sorry for this delay, guys. It's actually, I think, saving some other things here. All right, so we can note that our KO uh, should be equal to, okay, since we said OP is equal to PM here. Okay, so if we can prove that these two are equal from the opposite sides, they're equal from OP. And uh, PM and KN, they are given this, since these two are equal, KN and PM, they are equal. So if KN here and PM, they are equal, Okay, then it means KO is equal to OP. So therefore, KO is equal to OP. Okay, so this statement is not because we wrote it before. So therefore, KO is equal to OP from K to O to OP. So that's P, uh, that's the point A now becomes the midpoint. Thus, O is the midpoint. Is the midpoint of uh, KP, right? So, guys, I don't know if you had any other way that you saw that was going to be easier for you, then uh, let me know. Let me know. Let me know. Because you might have a simpler way to use than the one that I'm working with here. You can have the easiest way. All right, on question number nine, we are given complete the following statement the line through the midpoint of two other sides is parallel to the third side of that third triangle is parallel to and the third side. Okay, so that one is half of the length, okay? That's half the length, um, half the length, the other, uh, the third side. Okay, so uh, this is from your midpoint theorem, guys, if you are given these two concept. Okay, so if it is actually at midpoint, these two lines, they will be parallel and this side will be half of the other side, okay, which is the third side. It will be at half midpoint concept. And on 9.2, uh, we are given that if P in triangle PQRA and B are midpoints of uh, PQ and uh, PR respectively, okay, so this is a midpoint, this is a midpoint, so that means we've got same distance from P to B, which is the one that they indicated with this. Okay, so that's a midpoint here. And B, it's a midpoint again. Okay, so the question is, uh, and BQ, BQ, this BQ uh, intersects at W. Okay, AR and BQ, they intersect at W here. 
D and E are points on W, Q on W, Q. Where is our W? Okay, this one, W to Q, okay, and W are respective such that uh, W, D from W here to D is the same as from D to W. All right, W, D and D, Q, okay. Then W, E and E, R, these two, they are equal. Okay, so yeah. Let's see what C. Let's see. So the question is prove that A D E B is a parallelogram. All right. So um, there we had um, a lot of things that we can consider in uh, in practice. There. Uh, remember that, guys, from this statement here, from this statement that we got, uh, the line through the midpoint of two sides in a triangle is parallel and to and half so we 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 had the midpoint concept here because these are midpoints so uh, these two they are midpoints so it's by default that this a b is parallel to a b is definitely parallel to q r okay that's the midpoint theorem there from our midpoint theorem uh if it is so that these two are are are, are, are parallel then we said the, the third side, which is the this uh, mid, mid line that we have, this AD, A to B, it's half of the third part, which is the QR here. So it is actually half of QR. Okay, so it means from A to B, we have got half of QR there. Okay, let's leave this part uh, like that. We are also given some of the other part that we have. Okay, I want you to check what is going to happen because we also have other midpoints there. Okay, there are midpoints that we have in this triangle. Uh, we have a triangle from, uh, from W to Q to R there, from this triangle here. We are also given that these two are equal from W to D, W to E, uh, and E to this. So which means E is a midpoint, D is a midpoint. So the same concept is happening in triangle uh, WQR there. So in triangle WQR, we can see that uh, we have got the midpoint concept again. So DE is parallel to DR. Okay, so we've got uh, the, that midpoint uh, theorem again applying here. Uh, these there are at midpoints and in a triangle. So that means if so, just like what we said that um, AB is half of QR, the half of QR. So it means DE in this case is equal to half of this, this DE here. It's half of QR again. So it's half of QR. Okay. Uh, uh, by having DE, all right, being half of QR, AB being half of QR, there's something which is happening, which tells us that these two, they are equal. So AB here will be equal to, um, let me write it this way. So our AB is going to be equal to DE. So guys, sorry, this is slowing down. I don't know what's happening. Maybe it's because I've been recording for so long time. All right, so AB, and DE, they will be equal to each other, okay? They are actually not equal, just equal. They are parallel because here we saw that these two, they are parallel. So definitely these two lines, they are also parallel, okay? AB is definitely also parallel to DE and they are equal. So these two sides, AB and DE, they are parallel and at the same time, they're equal. So what can we do? You can just introduce something like this to represent that they are equal. So these two, they are not just parallel, they are parallel and equal. So if they are parallel and equal, we know that this only happens in a parallelogram where opposite sides, they are parallel and equal. So it therefore gives us to say the whole of the shape. What were you, what were you proving? A, B, that's A, B, okay, it's here. A, D, whatever that we have, A, D, E, B, which is the whole of that is a parallelogram. So therefore, uh, A to D uh, to E to B is a parallelogram. 
Okay, so what way are we taking this? We know that we are given one pair there, which is what? Op opposite sides. The one pair that we have is parallel and equal, and it maintains the properties of a parallelogram. So that means it's a parallelogram. So that was the paper, guys, having a total of 100 marks in this paper. So guys, please revise as much as you can. So many question papers, textbooks, uh, handouts, whatever that you can use as long, guys, it is applicable. As long as it's applicable, please revise as much as you can. So that's what we had, guys, for Maison African Motives still on Mathematics Grade 10 uh, revisions till we meet again.